Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you today's video from my home office in uh, Jerusalem. Same location, couple of new touches. You guys might see the on-air sign there in the background. I've actually had it for a few months now, but just got around to putting it up. Um, I want to talk today about something a little bit slightly off topic, even within the realm of the uh, techn technical stuff I talk about on this YouTube, which tends to be clustered around a couple of very niche subjects like home networking and uh, backup and disaster recovery. That's something related to cybersecurity, actually. And cybersecurity is a field I've been interested in for a number of years through the work that I uh, do, or slightly different work nowadays, but for the past five, six, seven years in Israel, I've been working as a marketer with technology companies and I've had a number of cyber sec clients it's a very hot space um I also had and this is I'm going to talk about air gapping in just a little bit because that's where I first came across the term air gapping was my first job here in Israel was working at a uh, industrial IoT company and what we were doing the company was manufacturing these gateways that would connect into IoT industrial IoT devices so what's an industrial IoT device? Just as you have, you know, f smart fridges and smart toaster ovens and smart air conditioners in the industrial setting, when people are trying to create smart cities, they push, they connect sensors like uh, chlorine sensors and electricity sensors and power quality sensors, and they would deploy those in their water networks and smart grids and stuff like that. Now, this is a whole area of technology that a lot of people haven't heard about called OT or operational technology. Everyone's heard about IT, informational technology, the stuff that's revolutionized our lives. But there's also something called OT and very closely related to the world of OT is something called SCADA. Now, uh, SCADA, and it's actually been so long since I was working with this company that I've forgotten what it actually stands for. Here we go. Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition is a computer-based system for gathering and analyzing real-time data to monitor and control equipment that deals with critical and time-sensitive materials for events. Let me try to explain that in more simple terms. If you have a smart city with a smart water network, all these sensors integrate into some if you imagine homer simpson in um in the simpsons and you remember he was in that nuclear power control room that was like a skater room it's a um a control uh technology software in which all these real-time inputs are integrated and commonly these systems are air gapped now what is air gapping so if you take your average home network right i am recording this video into a desktop computer here in my room, the room I'm always doing these videos in, my wife might be sitting in a different room, have her laptop, and we could actually create an internet that we have some kind of a chat program and we talk to one another, and we might have a router, but we may not have a modem, let's say, and that means there's no way any computer on this network can do anything except for communicate and exchange files between other clients on the network. There's a physical disconnection between the hardware we need to get to use the internet and the network, right? So to use the internet, we need a modem. and uh, But to just send packets across the local network, all we need is a, a router and maybe switches as well. Um, so again, in the terms of sort of computer networking, this is what's called the, the me and another computer on the network is what's called the LAN, a local area network. And the internet is the wide area network or the WAN. So who uses air gapping? Well, typically very secure stuff. So I mentioned SCADA systems for this reason. Think about what would happen if a city went smart and deployed a smart water network and deployed a smart electric, smart grid and everything was, everything had IoT sensors and it was all wired into these SCADA systems, right? If someone were to hack into my computer here, they might get a few files, they might be able to extract my passport from my computer and stuff like that. What would happen if an adversary were to hack the smart grid and by running a command on that computer, they could take down the power for the whole city, right? And uh, perhaps there might be patients in hospital hooked up to dialysis machines who, God forbid, well, they probably have generators, but you know, the point I'm trying to make is it's much, much more potentially dangerous. Hence, these type of secure networks tend to be air-gapped for that reason, these secure networks. So 
that's a little bit about air gapping and how I got interested in a little bit about CyberSec and air gapping. Now, um, I remember reading in the news a number of years ago, some article um, about this, these crazy experiments in Israel. Now, I live in Israel for those who uh, weren't aware. But I remember reading about, you know, these wild experiments where like some guy was able to transmit data off an air gap network by turning on and off the LEDs on a router, basically kind of like Morse code, right? And they had the router, they injected malware into the air gap network. So typically the only way is commonly um, assumed that you can hack an air gap network. Hacking anything connected to the internet, most clients are connect are protected by firewalls, at, you know, um, web application firewalls or WAFs. And their job is kind of to, you know, say, well, this is legitimate traffic. This traffic looks illegitimate. We're going to block down access for this traffic. But what if the server is not connected to the internet at all, right? So in that case, there's really not much you can do as a potential hacker. So the vulnerability of these networks tends to be some much more um, code and dagger stuff, you know? Some guy comes in disguised as a cleaner, if you watched Fauda or a Tehran, think more along these lines, right? And sticks a USB into the air gapped network a usb stick in order to c inject malware and compromise that network now once a network is compromised people might want to get out data but what happens if you only get access you only get to put in that usb stick in five seconds you got to run so there's something called data exfiltration and i sent this uh this page to a few of my geekier more computer oriented friends and uh th they loved it but trying to explain it to people less interested in tech i think when people hear air gapped and exfiltration they stopped listening so exfiltration means getting data out so if you were for whatever reason determined to hack and extract ultra sensitive data from an air gap network you'd have to figure out a way to not only compromise the system You'd have to figure out some way if you wanted to maintain that capability of constantly getting out info of exfiltrating data while that air while that network remains air gapped. So this is what these are the wild cybersecurity exploits demonstrated here. So it, I was the, uh, browsing YouTube this morning and hadn't thought about these this article I read a number of years ago. Couldn't remember the university. Couldn't remember the academic's name. And it was recommended as a video I should watch. And I was like, wow. So here it is. I'm gonna just jump over to my screen if I can figure out how to do that. It's called, um, let me just put, put the URL up here on my old school uh, notepad way for a second. It's called cybercoders.com. It's not actually a standalone website. It's actually just a like uh, forwarding URL and it'll forward you to this page. It's, uh, and the domain that you can see because it's cut off in my screen is cyber.bgu.ac.il. It's Ben Gurion University in Israel, which is one of the universities here in Israel, located in the desert, the Negev desert, and you know, not not maybe the place where you might expect the greatest minds of Israeli technology to be working on some pretty wacky projects. But there you go. And the guy running this is a man called Mordechai Gur, computer scientist at this university. He's, you know, this is a kind of a classic computer scientist website. They always put out these old school HTML and CSS based sites. I love it. Um, it's called the Advanced Cybersecurity Research Lab. Um, and I just want to wanted to show for those interested a couple of cool things. So this is where they list out all their experiments. So now that I've given the context, I hope this might be a bit more understandable if you just click into this network for um, this video for some weird reason, right? These are all the exploits they'd figured out and they give links here to YouTube videos and their YouTube channel, which I will get to presently. Ah, I already had it. Open. Whoops. I don't wanna, don't wanna uh, get a copyright thing for, for grabbing their video. This is it, truly, truly incredible. Starting with this one, SATA. SATA is the, the data cables connecting, uh, one of them anyway, connecting hard drives to the motherboard on a computer. So in this attack, I'll just go into the video and these are all different um, um, uh, vulnerabilities or methodologies they've, they've proven are viable for exfiltrating data from air gap systems. So to this one, for instance, SATA and air gap exfiltration attack via radio signals from SATA cables. So this stuff is wild. I mean, I, 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 use that, I use that advisedly. They basically inject malware. They find a way to turn the SATA cable into an antenna transmitting data from the air-gapped computer. And then all they need is some kind of a monitor 
somewhere someone off site that they can pick up those encrypted ones now that's not that's far from the coolest one but if you want to go to, through this website they list as well not just the videos they also list papers um like some of these i'm just gonna uh show a few of my favorite ones just to give you a feel for the material here power supply Leaking data from air gap systems by turning the power supplies into speakers. That's wild. Power supplies are PSUs, what power computers, and they find some way. There's other hacks that use acoustic properties. One of them is um, actually using the physical vibrations from a hard drive, a HDD. Um, the point of the video is I just wanted to explain a little bit about context of what this is. Here's the one I was fast. Another one I found fascinating. Covert data exfiltration via router LEDs. So, you know, you probably um, have a router in your home that looks a little bit like this TP-Link router and it's got these LED lights. Well, what if the malware could control those LED lights on the router and that was conveying an encrypted signal, a coded signal, and someone sitting outside the building, again, was able to had the cipher and could decrypt, decrypt the encoded messages transmitted as LED combinations. This, so it's it's like I would describe. So you can see those aren't regular lighting patterns you see on a router. This is actually an encoded message. Um, that's about it. So this stuff is so advanced that it is really, I can't believe this is really a thing stuff. It's almost like kind of science fiction, but this is real life. You know, real life can be more interesting than these Hollywood movies about espionage. Now, I don't know for sure that these were used in uh, Stuxnet or those um, attacks, but it's safe to say that if this is the capability of computer scientists that's in the public domain, that's uh, this already a 2017 video on the writer LED one. So five years later, who knows what kind of incredible technology exists for a day in the hands of uh, intelligence agencies and signals intelligence agencies uh, for exfiltrating data from these supposedly secure air gap networks. I guess the take home message of this video, and I've seen some, thought this a few times from some of the amazing cybersecurity answers on Quora, is if you think there's no way that you've outsmarted the people watching you if you're doing something very malicious like running a illicit, illicit nuclear weapons program if you think you've outsmarted the guys following you they have all sorts of ways to uh to win the game so really interesting stuff if you're interested in air gapping and cybersecurity, i'll pop a link in this video description to uh cyber coders and one going directly to this youtube channel because it's really worth looking at these uh different experiments thank you guys for watching hope this uh quick detour into cybersecurity was interesting. More videos along these lines coming soon to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.